Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Myself Chirak. In this video, I am going to discuss about how to find primitive roots and application of primitive roots in cryptography. So this topic will be covered under the network security. Before start this video, first of all, subscribe my channel on YouTube Chirak Valoria. Follow my blog EDU Resources. Follow me on Instagram and FB. So material of all the videos are available on my blog EDU Resources. So now let us start how to find primitive roots. In this video, I have covered two methods. The first method is primitive roots for the small numbers and the second method is primitive roots for the large numbers. So let us start with the first method primitive roots for the small prime numbers. To find the primitive roots for the small prime numbers, we have to consider two points. The first point is if A is a primitive root of Q where Q is prime number. The second point is a raised to n mod q where n is equal to 1 to q minus 1. So finally, our condition is this equation produce each integer from 1 to q minus 1 exactly once. So let us take one example to understand this method. For example, the q is equal to 7. Let's find the primitive root of q. So here n is equal to from 1 to 6 because the value of n is equal to 1 to q minus 1. Here q is equal to 7. So 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. So first of all, prepare one table. So this table is prepared based on this equation a raised to n mod q. So here the value of n is equal to 1 to 6. So I have write all the equation based on the value of n. So in all this equation, here the value of q is equal to 7, which is given in the example. So let us start find the primitive roots of the given number. So first of all value a is equal to 1. So here value of a is equal to 1 and we all know that base value is 1 and then value of power is anything the answer is 1. So all the equations answer is 1. Here our condition is not satisfied because our condition is a raised to n mod q produce each integer from 1 to q minus 1 exactly once. But here our answer is same for all the equations. For the next value of a, a is equal to 2. So the first equation answer is 2, second equation answer is 4, third equation answer is 1, fourth equation answer is 2. Here again 2 is repeat. So here a raised to 1 mod q, the answer is 2. Here a raised to 4 mod q, answer is 2. So here our condition is not satisfied because answer of a raised to 4 mod q is repeated. It is 2 again. So no need to find a raised to 5 mod q and a raised to 6 mod q. For the next value of a, a is equal to 3. So in first equation our answer is 3. In second equation it is 2. In third equation it is 6. In fourth equation it is 4. In fifth equation it is 5. In sixth equation it is 1. Here our condition is satisfied because we are getting all the numbers from 1 to q minus 1 exactly once. So here we can say 3 is the primitive root of 7. Next, a is equal to 4. So answer of the first equation is 4. Answer of the second equation is 2. Answer of the third equation is 1. Answer of the fourth equation is 4. So here, for a equal to 4, our condition is not satisfied because the answer of a raised to 1 mod q and a raised to 4 mod q are same. So here, 4 is repeated. So no need to find a raised to 5 mod q and a raised to 6 mod q. Next, a equal to 5. So answer of first equation is 5. Answer of second equation is 4. Answer of third equation is 6. Answer of fourth equation is 2. Answer of fifth equation is 3. And answer of sixth equation is 1. So here condition is satisfied because we get all the numbers from 1 to q minus 1 exactly once. So again we can say phi is the primitive root of 7. Next, a equal to 6. The answer of first equation is 6. Answer of second equation is 1. Answer of third equation is again 6. So here our condition is not satisfied because the answer of a raised to 1 mod q and the answer of a raised to 3 mod q both are same. So no need to find a raised to 4 mod q, a raised to 5 mod q and a raised to 6 mod q. So here, based on this calculation, we can say the primitive roots of 7 are 3 and 5. For the condition, a is equal to 1 to q minus 1. So next, there is one exercise for you guys. Find primitive root of 11. So find the solution by yourself and write the answer in comment section. 
Next method. Primitive roots for the large prime numbers. So first step. Express phi of q is equal to as possible powers of prime numbers like a raised to x, b raised to y, etc. Second one. Find a is equal to phi of q divided by a, b is equal to phi of q divided by b, let it be a, b, c, etc. Third step. Choose any number x if n1 is equal to x raised to a mod q, n2 is equal to x raised to b mod q and so on. So finally, condition is here n1, n2 and so on not equal to 1, then x is the primitive root of q. So here x is chosen any number in step number 3. So let us take one example to understand these three steps. So here our example is q is equal to 353. So find the primitive root of 353. So first step is as per our step number 1, phi of q is equal to phi of 353. So here step number 1 indicates phi of q is equal to as possible powers of prime numbers like a raised to x, b raised to y. So as per step number 1, I need two prime numbers small a and small b. So I am trying to simplify 353 but I cannot get two prime numbers. So I will use nearest composite number of 353 is 352. So here phi of q is equal to 352 equal to 2 raised to 5 into 11 raised to 1. So as per step number 1, here I am getting two prime numbers a and b. Here a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 11. Now step number 2, a is equal to phi of q divided by a. Here phi of q is equal to 352 and small a is 2. So now capital A is equal to 352 divided by 2 is equal to 176. So here capital A is equal to 176. Now find the capital B is equal to phi of q divided by small b. So here phi of q is 352 and the small b is 11. So the capital B is equal to 352 divided by 11 is equal to 32. So b is equal to 32. So as per step number 3, choose any number x. So here I have taken the value of x is equal to 2. So as per step number 3, our equation is n1 is equal to x raised to a mod q. So here the value of x is equal to 2, a is equal to 176 and q is equal to 353. So put all the values in the equation 2 raised to 176 mod 353. So here our answer n1 is equal to 1. So as per our condition n1, n2 and so on not equal to 1. So here our condition is not satisfied because n1 is equal to 1. So here no need to find n2. Now take the another value of x, x equal to 3. Now put the value in the equation of step number 3. n1 is equal to x raised to a mod q. Here x is equal to 3. Now put the value in equation 3 raised to 176 mod 353. The answer is equal to n1 equal to 352. So here n1 not equal to 1. Now find n2 because n1 is not equal to 1. So n2 is equal to x raised to b mod q. Put the value of x, b and q in this equation is equal to 3 raised to 32 mod 353 is equal to n2 equal to 140. So here again n2 is not equal to 1. So our condition is satisfied because n1 and n2 up to and so on not equal to 1. So here we can say the 3 is one of the primitive root of 353. Next exercise find the primitive root of 547. So find the solution by yourself and write your answer in the comment section. Next application of primitive roots in cryptography. So the concept of primitive roots is mostly used in the Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm in the cryptography. If you want to know about Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm then click on above thumbnail. So thank you for watching this video. Subscribe me on YouTube Chirag Baloria. Follow my blog EDU resources, follow me Instagram and FB. So material of all the videos are available on my blog EDU resources. All the links are available in description.